I would like to start, uh, you know, with the panelists in terms of our organization and their leaders. Are they appreciative of the fact that this change is, you know, really impending, is really happening? Are they ready to embrace this? Are they ready to take on this? What are organizations doing about it? That will be the next part of our discussion. Because ultimately, what happened in, say, early 1900s, it was Frederick Taylor, right? He created assembly line. That assembly line, today we are actually standing there with AI and the yeah. digital and disruption. We are actually breaking that, right? Are we ready to understand and embrace some of these things? What are organizations doing? I mean, any thoughts around that? I mean, we have a hardcore manufacturing organization here. How do you see that? So I think, you know, uh, we absolutely are conscious of the way, as I was mentioning, you know, the way uh, the organization is changing right in front of our eyes. Uh, you know, if you really look at it from a human resource point of view, uh, our workforce is changing both in the white collar as well as in the blue collar uh, segments. Uh, absolutely much more aware about uh, the world around them, more technologically connected, possibly the most technology connected that we have seen. And, and uh, to your point earlier, uh, you know, and what you said, globally much more aware. As in, you know, th this is the generation that is the most boundaryless of the generations that I have seen uh, in, in the, you know, in, in my career so far. Uh, very easily able to adapt to cultures and uh, things that they might not have seen are gone, but because they have consumed that information through YouTube. By the way, uh, another thing, YouTube is the most uh, favorite site of Gen Z than, uh, than any other site. Uh, they would possibly be viewing uh, two, uh, two times more uh, video content than any other generation so far, almost spending close to two hours on videos every single day. So look at it from a human resource point of view, the way you would communicate, you will have to be more visual, more interactive, uh, more instant in terms of the communication. So the way we are looking at it is that, you know, I, I have shared with Anurag a lot earlier about this point is that, you know, we are moving away from these long term things that, you know, we would usually do. And we're looking at more instant, uh, even employee engagement more instant employee engagement than you would wait for one year and do a survey. So you would look at it in an instant poll and see what is it. Every day we are able to measure engagement. We're looking at in terms of, you know, the communication about policies. I think there was a talk, uh, there were mentioned about policy manuals. There is no policy, uh, policy manual exists for exists sake, but point is that it is actually becoming more visual, more interactive. Nobody reads them. Nobody reads that and then that's, that's another thing. Second is in terms of, you know, the way um, the, they would want that there is a definitely this is a generation that I absolutely to the point on consumers is the generation that has been that is the most uh, that was born into a, a, a generation that has got a lot of cash they have serious cash with them they are the best they have the most you know from a spending power point of view the most uh, uh, the generation that will spend the most and therefore we are looking at in terms of saying you know how do we therefore even from our products point of view, how do we make them available to the products in terms of this is completely going through the entire channel, not from just uh, sourcing, manufacturing, but actually looking at how our customers would deal, how do we deal with these customers in a more digitally aware uh, manner. So across the organization, um, several changes in the way we would work, absolutely not the way we would, we would have worked for the last 30 years. That much change is happening in the last two, three years itself. Clearly, the connectivity between the, the customers, the employees is obviously increasing much more. And obviously that is leading to certain innovations or certain ways of dealing and marketing with them. So I just wanted to ask you on this one that how are you prepared? You spoke about yourself that, you know, uh, I have, you, you are learning every day. You know, you have seen uh, generations, but you are learning every day to be absolutely relevant even today. How are you making re your rest of the organization leadership relevant? Uh, it's a very interesting question, actually. I, I think we are talking quite a lot about multi-generation workforce. We need to manage them. I think the biggest challenge HR has is to how do you mentor, coach, or develop your own leaders who have a different mindset. Right. The way deal it. I just want to give one small anecdote. 
uh, I've just got married. I was a very junior executive in DCM. I told my wife, we'll go today evening for a movie. It was a wedding anniversary. So at 5 o'clock, my boss called me. I said, look, we have some work. We have to send it to the chairman. Okay, so I stayed back. Okay, fine. I went home. There was no telephone to communicate even. The landline telephone is a big uh, asset in those days. So I went home at late, it's fine. You know, many years later, when I was something in the organization, I've asked one of the ladies, young intern, he said, some urgent work, are you okay? No, sir, I have a date with my boyfriend. Okay, so I think, you know, I appreciated it. And I recall my old experience. I think one of the things which the, the leaders have to change is change of environment, change of circumstance. It is not that they, they, they behave differently. It's, it's unfair to label everyone in the same fashion. I just want to give, because in cricket is the most popular game in our country today. See the style of Virat Kohli. See the style of Ajinki Rain, Rahane. Okay, he has also played one test as a captain quietly. See the style of Rohit Sharma. Virat Kohli never won the IPL. Rohit Sharma won successfully IPL, but Virat Kohli won many internationals. I think you need to, you need to for different strokes, for different folks, that you need to understand. Right. If I have to say one message I give it to leaders is, try to manage Mali to Malik. Try to manage Mali to Malik. That means uh, either you are young or old, number is here only. I think what, do you have the bandwidth to manage right from the top chairman to the, to the guard at the hotel or at the hospital? If you have that bandwidth, uh, you know, a, any, any generation you can handle it. The, one of the challenges we see it, we get into A square syndrome. I'm elder to you, I'm higher in the rank, so what I say is right. If boss is always right, you know. Right. So that syndrome we have to change. I think those who have changed, are, some are still changing like me, but they are able to manage and they can give storytelling is a great thing which they can do. What is the elder generation can do? It is a experience, not from the age, but the quality of experience, the wisdom they give it to you. I just want to give anecdote in close. I was, I was in industrial relations in Calcutta, hotbed, and every day during lunchtime, before lunch, there is a corporate office, union, workforce. Ten people used to barge into my boss's chamber. I used to sit outside. And they used to make noise about the quality of the food. And they used to shout. And he's a tough guy, but he's not a Bengali. Uh, he's from Rajasthan, but he, he studied, worked in Calcutta. So he used, to, he, used, he, he used to send them back. He asked, him, asked me to come and sit. I said, just sit, don't talk. So after two days, he said, what is your learning from there? I said, you know, they come and shout at you in, in Bengali, and you speak in Hindi. Why can't you speak in Bengali? I said, gentlemen, learn one thing, young man. You said, when somebody is in an agitated mood, don't talk in the language which he is familiar with. Switch the language, then, you know, Bengali, some of them cannot speak Hindi. The flow is lost, the tempo is gone, they'll walk away. When you want to reach somebody, Pyar say, then you used to call two guys later. Why you are making noise? I think, you know, this is the wisdom I learned when I, though I am a South Indian, I've worked all my life in Punjab and Delhi, when I used to deal with the unions and federations in Punjab, they used to come and speak in Punjab, I used to speak in English. So in two minutes, I think, you know, this is not, you do not find in the textbooks or in the curriculum. This is the experience storytelling which leaders have to give and people have to listen. Oh, that's a old story. Don't tell me it doesn't work. It is not that you, there are different strokes for different people. It's uh, both art and science. That's how I'll say it. Thank you for a very interesting anecdote. I just only hope that, you know, these guys don't, uh, you know, ask you to send it on WhatsApp, you know, these stories. <laughs> I mean, that will be like, you know, they don't have time to come and sit with you. What are organizations doing for this group of people? You know, what, how are you actually inducting them, assimilating them? How are you driving them to be as productive as possible? And right now I'm not talking only about policies per se, but just in terms of when they walk into your organization, what do you do? Do you do anything different from what you were doing earlier? So, you know, and, and this is a very, uh, this is a topic that we discuss very, very often when we look at how our onboarding is and, you know, how people, you know, what are the reasons this generation is quitting us for. And, you know, the, 
what we figure out is no different what we figure out for our consumers also. You know, it's yeah. the experience bit. They don't want to listen to the policies. They don't want anybody to rattle it to them on day one, day two, day three. But they want to experience it on day one. Mm. And, and a lot of this, you know, and we were speaking about how they consume content. You have to do it very, very experientially. You cannot have the same uh, programs that you had for so many years. We are, we are really thinking of how do we make everything more agile, you know, and so that they get onboarded and they learn on the way. You know, everyone has a phone today. You don't need to have sessions of two days and three days like before to do that. There's a lot of content that is getting passed on to them in a very, uh, uh, in a very, uh, you know, it's not in a very upfront manner. But, you know, you come and there's a welcome note, right, which flashes there. Or, you know, there is somebody who will meet you and he's on the way, he's, you know, you see the walls that are talking to you. So your whole history is written there and people experience what the organization is all so about. Using subtly you are... It's, it's very okay. subtle. It's like, you know, when you go to a website today mm -hmm. and how you experience a product is right. the way, you know, you have to think for how are, you, how are they experiencing your organization. Very interesting. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, fortunately, unfortunately, whatever, we are in that space for our consumers where we are almost all our, uh, you know, architects are focusing on creating that experience for the clients that we work on. You know, sometimes we become inward focused and we say, let's do it for our employees also. And what, what can we do, uh, you know, more in that space? How can they experience engagement without being called for a fun event? Right. Right. You know, the traditional Friday fun and all that, it doesn't work for them. They'd like to be, you know, more involved in creating something and getting engaged in that. You know, so allow for more hackathons, allow for more, you know, more of those experiences that they feel engaged right. in than events. Or, you know, so that's what I think if we've done that, you know, that's what we are focusing on in our company. Very interesting, uh, Niru, as you say it. So one is like your organization, as you said, it is, is in teens. Yeah. You are pretty much dealing with a lot of this, probably millennials and this group, most of the people, right? Uh, where organizations are seeing like, you know, again, uh, more than just two generations, if there are four or five generations, how do you manage some of these? Because you can't have a different experience or a completely different approach for, say, a 50-year-old and then expecting a 21 or 25-year-old to be dealt differently. How do you do that? So, is, uh, is, is it being yeah. done? Uh, I think uh, as, at DS we have one of the best offices uh, that one could aspire for. It's a beautiful, uh, you know, setup with every possible facility in that place. But uh, is that what is going to attract people to come and join us or to keep continuing working with us? I don't think so. It is the uh, what, as HR, we felt was what is required is the cultural shift, the change in the way we approach things, the change in the way we are, uh, you know, working together. Now, what we realized was uh, that uh, whether it is Generation uh, Z or X or Y or Baby Boomers, what is required is, uh, and, and the requirement of the day, is to have an environment which is more collaborative, which is more transparent, which actually gives you uh, some sort of instant feedback. And that uh, environment mm -hmm. will be helpful in managing di diverse workforces together. Uh, so at DS we've started a program called the DS ACE program and this is uh, where we are bringing in youngsters from the top institutes uh, in the country. And uh, about five, six years ago this was unthinkable at my workplace at least uh, that we would be able to manage them because you know having people who are 30 years into uh, the work workplace with experience and expertise in whatever they're doing, uh, will they be even open to having these youngsters come and teach them something new? So this program, I'm not going to go into a lot of details about it, but it essentially is a, a way of having projects handled by the youngsters. So they are happier because they are getting their individual uh, recognition and giving a contribution there. Yet, they're, because they're helping in improving a process, their acceptability to the older generation is there. During this whole process, there's a lot of reverse mentoring which is happening. So I've had business heads who've come and, you know, told with glee that, oh, you know, I've learned what uh, regression analysis is all about. I've never, you know, really experienced it. For me, if I say, I never ever experienced Snapchat, and if somebody new comes and tells me, I'm all excited. So I think it is the whole, the whole challenge is changing the mindset of the organization, right from the leader to the young person who's coming in, ensuring there's an environment where everybody thrives together. 
And if we don't yeah. do that, then our organization is never going to really succeed in today's uh, world. Great, Simon. I think that's a uh, you know it's, it's a great initiative.